to do is live a very normal life in America, and you will get toxic, and you will get diseases. What is it about us? Well, what it is about us is that in a very, very short period of time, historically speaking, we have completely changed our diets, completely changed our environment, and completely changed our behavior. These are the basic parameters of, of human health and human existence, and, and we have, in a short period of time, changed everything. Well, you simply can't change everything in a very short period of time and expect you're not going to get some funny results. However, people will point out, critics will point out, that we live far longer than our ancestors who lived an average of, what, age 40? But I would argue they had a lot higher incident of um, childhood um, um, death exactly. at birth childhood and mortality. accidents, exactly, right. accidents yeah. and infectious diseases. That was a hard one to deal with. Yeah, well, and, and then you're absolutely right, Laura. That's exactly the way it comes out. I mean, if you have two people in a mythical society and one lives to be one day old and the other lives to be 100 years old... And then you average it. Average life expectancy is 50. And yet we have somebody living to be 100. And as we've reduced infant mortality, life expectancy has gone up. And as we have also, uh, through modern sanitation, done away with uh, epidemics, uh, life expectancy has gone up. And today, more people live to be age 65 than ever before in history. However, if you get to be age 65, your life expectancy at that age has barely budged over the last 100 years. It's gone up about one and a half years in the last 100 years. And scientists say we should be able to live to 120. So still we're only meeting half of our potential if you look at it that way. That is correct. That's what Genesis says. We, uh, man's days uh, shall be 120 years. However, uh, the biology journals are now saying that man's life expectancy exceeds 135, and they don't really know how much more than 135. Some of them are saying it exceeds 150. Oh, interesting. I didn't know the Bible was saying 120, but on the other hand, I haven't heard much over 120 because that was what the telemirrors or whatever were able to divide, and that, I thought that was pretty much the limit. Well, the oldest documented person that I found in my research was like 254. You found evidence of a 254-year-old yes. human being. Yes, he was uh, in China, born in the 1600s, died in the early 1900s. Um, at age 100, he was sent birthday greetings by the imperial government of China, and at age 200, he was sent birthday greetings by the imperial government, and, and those records are there, those imperial government records are there, and that's how this man was able to be documented. Well, was he a Hansa? Uh, no, he wasn't a Hunza, but he lived in he lived in that part of China near the Himalayas. Okay. So the point is, it's possible to live far better, far healthier, far longer than we have been. Absolutely. Well, you know, you talk to people about that, and a lot of people say, "I don't want to live to be old," because their vision of old is that um, you know you're in a wheelchair with a bunch of tubes stuck in you. Uh, these people didn't live that way. They lived to be like the Hunzas, lived to be an average age of 120, and they were uh, vigorous and, and healthy and vibrant uh, up until their death. Hmm. So it's possible. Yes, it is. That's the potential. That's the potential. We're not anywhere near that potential, but we can be, and that's what we need to focus on. We can be, because health is a choice, and we now have the technology, we now have the knowledge to teach every person how to be healthy, how to choose health, and there is no reason anymore for people to get sick. Tell us your own personal story. There you were on your deathbed going, this just ain't working, the medical, standard medical uh, answer to my problems. What did you do? How did you sort all this out? And when was it? I, I think I did it with the grace of God. Um, it was back in 1985, and by the time I was close to death, um, I really, my brain was not functioning, my body was not functioning. I was, I had days to live, and uh, I could not lift my head from the pillow. That's how sick I was. Uh, and somehow, at the last moment, I, I was able to reason that because I was dying of liver failure, uh, liver failure caused by a prescription drug, by the way, where that poisons my liver, that, uh, and I remembered from my study of biochemistry that uh, vitamin C helped the liver to detoxify. And I thought to myself, I wonder if any vitamin C would help me. And, uh, and I started to take some vitamin C, and, uh, and within 24 hours I felt better. And within 48 hours I was able to sit up in bed, and that was just a miracle for me. And then you decided my whole body was toxic? I mean, that's a leap. Well, it was a leap, and, uh, but that started a process of learning. And uh, even though I'm, you know, I'm a highly trained uh, chemist, uh, I really didn't understand anything about health. I was about as knowledgeable about health as, you know, maybe the average college graduate. Um, it wasn't until I started to study it in depth that um, all of these revelations came to me, and, uh, and it was just one, one new discovery after another. Uh, but um, with each one came more power. It took me two years, by the way, Laura, to, to restore myself to where I could function again. That's how bad off I was. It makes any sense, though. I mean, take the toxins out of the cells, and the cells function better. Well, what I, I discovered, Laura, is, is just that. Here's, here's the bottom line. This, this has been called the most important medical discovery in 200 years. There is only one disease. And what does that mean to the average person? It, it's just everything. Because as long as there are thousands of diseases, not even our most learned physicians can cope with thousands of diseases. It is just baffling beyond belief. And so what happens is our physicians end up suppressing disease, suppressing the symptoms of disease, and never curing the disease because it is so complicated, so baffling, that no one can deal with it. That was what was so obvious about um, the conversation on chelation therapy. Rather than try to shove the 
junk in the arteries aside, why not just remove it altogether? And at the same time, remove toxins from the cells in general, the heavy metals, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, it, you know, why leave, it, why leave it there and try to deal with it? Why not just remove it altogether? You cannot get well if you leave it there. You cannot get well. And what I discovered was there is only one disease. And, uh, and I've been working with that for 16 years. And then last year, at an international medical conference in Monte Carlo, the head of an Italian research institute got up and said that his institute had just made the single most important medical discovery in 200 years. They had discovered that there's only one disease. And they went on to show, you know, biochemistry as to what this one disease is and how it happens. The Chinese were into this, though, way back when, too. Yes, of course, because it, may, it makes all the sense in the world. One energy system and keep it flowing, um, yes. you know, keep everything in balance. And Now, why is it that if you... Uh, the toxins accumulate in the liver, you get liver disease, in the uh, whatever organ you get that disease. I mean, that's why it looks on the surface why we have a thousand and one different diseases, is what organ is going to show the, the symptoms, right. the ailments. Well, what, what How happens? is that determined? Do you have a propensity to a weakness in an organ? Is yes. it the nature of the yes. toxins? Some people, right, some people have a propensity to a weakness in a certain organ, and also the uniqueness comes in from unique exposures to toxins, okay. uh, unique um, susceptibility to toxins, uh, unique uh, nutritional deficiencies. Or where viruses may end up and implant themselves? Uh, it, it, exactly. All of these things uh, determine how your disease is going to manifest. If you're, uh, for instance, uh, most Americans are zinc deficient. Uh, zinc deficiency will end up with eye problems. And so many people in our society, a macular degeneration, they have all kinds of eye problems. Uh, prostate cancer is you know, one of our leading causes of one of our leading cancers. Uh, uh, the prostate is a very zinc-rich organ. And a lot of men in our society have enlarged prostates, and they have all kinds of problems because of that. That's a chronic zinc deficiency. Yes, yes, yes. So okay, now you're getting to the other half of the equation, which is remove the toxins that add the nutrients back to the cells, and then the cells will really be ripping along, doing their job optimally. Yeah, there's only one disease, and that's a cell that isn't working right. Mm -hmm. there's and there's two causes of that. Two causes, yeah. And, uh, and one cause is when the cell doesn't get everything it needs on a daily basis, and we call that deficiency. And the other one is when a cell is getting something it really and truly doesn't need, and we call that toxicity. There's a simple system, one disease, two causes. You know, we think of the mind as something separate from the body. You know, we think of the mind as in the head. It's not. The mind is the body. The body is the mind. Every cell in the body is part of the mind. And so every thought that you have has biochemical consequences. And when you feel anger, when you feel resentment, when you feel these negative things, it has a real negative effect on your biochemistry. We found out why people need exercise. And what did you find out? Well, here's why. Previous to that, we thought that the thing that had the biggest single effect on the chemistry and the behavior of a cell was a hormone. Now, hormones are part of the body's communication system. Hormones are messenger molecules, and they bring messages to cells, and they tell cells to do certain things. So we thought, boy, you know, hormones have the biggest effect of all. No, it's well, just one piece of a big puzzle, isn't it? Exactly, and what we found out was that physically stretching a cell, physically moving, physically stretching a cell, had a profound impact on the chemistry and the behavior of the cell. That's why you need to exercise.